Hello everybody, what is up? It is Cyborg Elf here with another video and today I want to teach you how to make a menu using OmGUI or also called OmGUI. And what this is, it's a really nice graphics library so you can make things like this and it's pretty simple to use and it's definitely easier than uh, coding it using DirectX but we're going to be hooking DirectX. And how we're going to be hooking that is going to be using Kiro. So here is a really nice graphical hook and you can use it on DirectX 9 to DirectX 12, OpenGL as well as Vulkan based games. So this tutorial is pretty transferable to other games. We're going to be doing this in CSGO and CSGO uses DirectX 9. But if you want to do a different game you literally just have to change a 0 to a 1. You might have to consult the documentation a little but that's about it. As well as for OmGUI, you can consult the documentation if you want to make some really complex stuff. But we're going to start this tutorial out simple by making a FOV slider in C++. So you can actually do this by downloading these files here along with let's find it these two files here for DirectX 9 or other ones depending on which DirectX version or which graphics you want to hook to and we're also going to be installing these. Same thing with Kiro, you can install Kiro.cpp and Kiro.h as well as Minihook but I also found a really nice library or sorry a really nice github post project uh, that has all this included so it's going to save us some time from having to download all that on our own so you can see right here it's downloaded for us so I'll have this down in the description if you want to check it out. So all you have to do is come here and download the zip. If you don't have WinRAR or some type of .zip file opener, um, just go download one. Most of you probably will if you've been on PC for a while. So open that up and I will drag this to my desktop. And then I'm going to be using Visual Studio Community 2019. If you're on an earlier version, it really doesn't matter too much. But all we're going to do is come right here and open this .sln file up. Alright, so it comes with two things. It might be closed like this. You just have to open it and double click on the file you want to view. We have main.cpp as well as a includes file where we have the Windows API included, uh, DirectX 9, then we have Kiro for hooking, and then I'm GUI, which is going to use DirectX 9 to draw. It's pretty simple how it works, but the words are kind of confusing. I'll explain it simpler here. Kiro hooks CSGO to use DirectX 9, and then OmGUI uses the DirectX 9 to draw. Alright, so we want to actually set this to x86 if it's not already that, because that is going to be the architecture of CSGO. And then we can go look in the properties and I'll explain some stuff for you. This configuration type, we want this to be a DLL. And if you don't have a SDK version selected, make sure you have at least 10. And you can select it right here. It really just make sure you have one selected. Same thing with platform tool set. Make sure one is selected. I'm on version 142. And make sure this is multibyte as well. If you're on an earlier version of Visual Studios, this character set option will be in general, not in advanced. And then we can go and look in Linker. In Linker, we can see it uses direct, uh, d3d9.lib and d3dx9.lib. This is just additional dependencies for DirectX 9. If we look in VC++ directories, we can also see included directories. Right here, we'll click Edit. We have Microsoft SDK June 2010, and we do the slash include for the include one. And then for the library directories, we do the same thing, but this one's going to be slash lib slash x86. Now, if you don't have DirectX 9 installed, you just need to install DirectX June 2010. This should be the right one. And then it should work, but if it's not showing up in your files, make sure you manually link the include directories to the correct path. All right, with that out of the way, that's just stuff that normally confuses a lot of people. Here we have our project. So what we can do right now is we can actually build it. So Control Shift B or head up to here and click Build Solution, and it succeeded. So since this is a DLL, 
we're going to need a manual map DLL injector to inject it into our game. I'm using Alyssa Alice injector. I probably said that wrong, but that's the name of it. Right here, we're going to be using the x86 version. You can come and download it. If you have your own manual map injector that you prefer, obviously feel free to use that. But if you do not, I recommend this one. So let's head over to Steam and right click and go to Properties. And since we are just kind of debugging and all that, you want to make sure you set this to dash and secure so we can run this in kind of a developer mode without vac running valve anti-cheat so this is loading up and right here I will run the injector make sure you run the x86 version to match both the DLL and to match the game's architecture so we have this right here we can come over here and I'll type CSGO so I can find it easy and select the process each time you start the game you might need to reselect the process depending on the injector that you have We'll click add DLL and the reason that we need to copy this right here, copy all the way to slash debug, don't copy the DLL part. And this is how we're gonna find the DLL to use. So we'll double click on this and we'll hit inject. And boom, right here we have I'm GUI. Oops. I'm GUI open. It might be like this when you first launch it. You can simply just expand it, and boom, we have a window. But we run into our first issue. You're going to be in a game, and you don't always want to have this window open. You're going to want this window to be closed sometimes. So let's add a way to control that. We can head over to here, and to the main.cpp, and this is where most of our code is going to be. This part right here, this is for attaching the DLL. Same thing with this, this is for like this is a git process window function and we have a lot of functions like that but the meat of the code is going to be right here so what we're going to do is we're going to complete create a bool and we'll call this bool show and we'll set the initial value to false you can set this to true if you want the menu to be open when you first inject but personally I'll set this to false And we want to control this bool. So we'll do a simple if statement git, uh, I believe it's async key state. And then we'll select what key we want to play, press to show and hide the menu. So we'll do vk underscore insert. vk stands for virtual key. And if you want to do a different key, just type something else. Like you can do f1. And if there's a specific one you're looking for, you can search up a virtual key table to find it. And then we'll also put and one. This is just so it doesn't spam click. And the code right here is going to be really simple. So we'll do show is equal to whatever the opposite of show is. So if this was false, you know, become true, and so on and so forth. So now that we have that done, let's do an if right here. And if show, when we do this and don't put anything else, it's the same as doing if show is equal to true. So we'll put some scope variables from here to here. And this looks good. Now, as well as this, we want a way to close out the cheat safely instead of just exiting out of CSGO. So what we can do now is if, and we'll do git async key state again. And we'll set this to vk underscore end. And if that happens, we want to do Kiro, oops, and then we'll do a scope variable, and we'll run shut down. As well as, if you want, we can do a return zero to exit out of the application entirely. So that we have that done, let's do Control Shift B and build our application again. And let's put the DLL back in here, and manual map inject. So this window is still here because we never made a way to close it. So we'll just ignore this old one for now from when we first injected. And I click insert. As I click insert each time, it shows and closes, shows and hides. So we have this. And let's actually try pressing end. And we press end, and the menu is gone. We can do this again. Oh, my injector is messing up. It doesn't want me to inject again because it's already been injected. But yeah, so I'll close out of this just so we don't have any issues later, as well as we can close out of this. So as you saw, our window name was Amgui Window. You can rename this to whatever you want. So we'll call this CSGO Menu. And then in between these begin and end lines is where you're going to put everything. 
So let's start off by doing something pretty simple, an FOV slider. I will continue adding on more to this and showing you more concepts that you can do with Amgui, or you can feel free to learn on your own. So first off, let's come up here and we'll make a static int, and we'll call this FOV. And let's set this equal to 90, because that is, I believe, the default FOV in CSGO. All right, so we come down here and we'll do Amgui and then a scope variable, and here you can see all the stuff you can use with Amgui. There's a lot. You can do things like buttons, labels, and all that good stuff. But what we want to do now is going to be a slider int. So we'll do this, and here we can see the parameters it takes, a label, the value that it's going to be, and a min and a max. So let's name this. We'll name this something like simple, like FOV changer. Feel free to name it something else if you want to do that. And then we'll pass in the FOV value and then set a min and a max. So for me, I'll set this to negative 180 and 180. Feel free to tinker around with those values. Find something that looks good for a good menu. All right, so that's done. We have the whole slider thing. Let's actually do reading and writing memory. So we have two templates that we're going to be using. And keep in mind, these templates are different than the templates we use for external but the templates do make everything easy for us so we have a read process memory template and a write process memory read process memory we just put in the address and then write process memory we put in the addresses and the value we want it to be okay so let's scroll down to here first thing we're going to want to get our game module we can actually do this in the initialize part of the code because we only need to get the game module once so let's do up here a uint pointer underscore t and we'll call this game a capital M module. And we'll set game module equal to, and we'll do a d word cast, get module handle. And then we want to get the module handle of client.dll. All right, that looks good. So we'll do a u int pointer, and let's get our local player. So we'll call this local player. Excuse me, this needs to have an underscore t. And we'll set this to read process memory. The value type is going to be a u int pointer. And how we're going to get this? It's going to be the game module plus DW local player. But we run into an issue because we have not defined DW local player yet. So let's do that real quick. We'll head over to header, add new item, and we'll make a header right here. So I'll call this offsets.h. And I'm gonna get these offsets from haze dumper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right here, scroll all the way down to the end of the scope, and get this and then we'll get these two you can only get the ones you want if you want to do that but for the future it will be easier to just reference them all and put them all in here right now some people like to have this in this variable format but personally I don't like it so we're gonna turn these into define so we're gonna do control F and we're gonna put in this value here and click this down arrow and let's replace this with hashtag define and let's replace all same thing with this we need to get rid of the equals because defines don't have that so we'll set this to space and same thing with the semicolons so we'll get rid of those and boom we can head over to our includes because we need to include this so we'll go hashtag include offsets.h and this should be good now. Yep, expands to and then it has the address. Keep in mind, CSGO does update quite frequently, so you might need to update these offsets every now and then. All right, so now that we have the local player done, we can do a simple write process memory, and this is going to be an int local player, and then we can do plus m underscore i default FOV and something is right here so 
the game does not have a default FOV, or excuse me, Haze Dumper doesn't include the offset for default FOV. So I'll give you this right here. We can just put default FOV, and here's the value. So now that we have that, we can put this right here. And let's write default FOV to the value of the FOV slider. And that's everything we need. So we'll do control shift B and build it. You can switch it to release mode, but just make sure it's still x86. But since we're still kind of developing, we'll do that. All right, so let's attach this to CSGO again and then add the DLL. All right, so let's hit the manual map inject button and we'll hit insert to show our cheat. And something we'll work on later is a way to free the mouse because the mouse is always stuck to the middle of the screen. So you can press escape and open up the menu so you can free your mouse. And here we have the FOV changer. So we can modify it like this. When you go this far, it gets a little messed up, but something like this, and boom, we've changed our FOV for CSGO. Let me know what other aspects I should add to this menu. It's pretty simple, and you can definitely start adding stuff on your own. I will go over threading and just functions to kind of clean up the whole project and make everything run more efficiently in the next video, and we'll also add some more things. Anyways, peace out.